Schrodinger's Cat by Ursula K. Le Guin As things appear to be coming to some sort of climax, I've withdrawn to this place. It is cooler here and nothing moves fast. On the way, I met a married couple who were coming apart. She had pretty well gone to pieces, but he seemed, at first glance, quite hearty. While he was telling me that he had no hormones of any kind, she pulled herself together and, by supporting her head in the crook of her right knee and hopping on the toes of her right foot, approached us, shouting, "'Well, what's wrong with a person trying to express themselves?' The left leg, the arms, and the trunk, which had remained lying in the heap, twitched and jerked in sympathy. "'Great legs,' the husband pointed out, looking at the slim ankle. "'My wife had great legs.' "'A cat has arrived.' interrupting my narrative. It is a striped yellow tom with a white chest and paws. He has long whiskers and yellow eyes. I never noticed before that cats had whiskers above their eyes. Is that normal? There's no way to tell. As he's gone to sleep on my knee, I shall proceed. Where? Nowhere, evidently, yet the impulse to narrate remains. Many things are not worth doing, but... Almost anything is worth telling. In any case, I have a severe congenital case of Ethica Laboris Puritanica, number one, or Adam's disease. It is incurable except by total decapitation. I even like to dream when I sleep, and to recall my dreams. It assures me that I haven't wasted seven or eight hours just lying there. And now here I am, lying here, hard at it. While the couple I was telling you about finally broke up, the pieces of him trotted around bouncing and cheeping, like little chicks. But she was finally reduced to nothing but a mass of nerves, rather like fine chicken wire, in fact, but hopelessly tangled. So I came on, placing one foot carefully in front of the other, grieving. This grief is with me still. I, I fear it's a part of me like foot or loin or eye, or may even be myself, for I seem to have no other self, nothing further, nothing that lies outside of the borders of grief. Yet I don't know what I grieve for. My wife, my husband, my children, or myself, I can't remember. Most dreams are forgotten, try as one will to remember. Yet later the music strikes the note, and the harmonic rings along the mandolin strings of the mind, and we find tears in our eyes. Some notes keep playing, and that makes me want to cry. But what for? I am not certain. 